sometimes he's referred to as a legend. He isn't a legend. A legend, according to Webster, is, uh, has yet to be proved. It is, it's a bit mythical. There's nothing mythical about Walter Johnson. He existed and was probably the best picture of all time. If you have an exceptionally good curve, a uh, better curve ball than a fast one, or when you get out there and a base hit might hurt you, or in a ball game and a uh, good batter up or something like that, well, then you want to throw him a curve if you have a real good curve. If you have a better fast one than, than you have a curve, if you have a real good fast ball and not a very good curve, why, I'd throw him the fast ball. If you look at the few frames that we have of Walter Johnson pitching, and you look at that easy sidearm motion, it looks like picnic beer ball. Hey, I could hit against that. But everybody who ever faced him said they'd never seen or heard a fastball like that before. He had very long arms, and he basically just drew his right arm back and slung a baseball the way you would throw a, a stone trying to skip it across water. Batters used to say he made it look so easy. They said he looked like he was just playing catch. Big Chief and Big Train. It's 18th of June, 1925, as President Calvin Coolidge hands Walter Johnson coveted award. Johnson of Washington Senators has been chosen most valuable player in American League. Well-deserved honor for famed pitcher. The first time I faced him, I watched him take that easy wind up. And then something went past that made me flinch. The thing just hissed with danger. We couldn't touch him. Every one of us knew we'd met the most powerful arm ever turned loose in a ballpark. Ty Cobb. I gotta ask you, Mr. Feller, you're, I know you're not shy. Were you the hardest thrower ever? <laughs> I would not know that. I would say I presume that Walter Johnson was the fastest pitcher in history. He was a one-pitch pitcher. He had no curveball, but he threw from the side. He was a big guy. He was a great hitter and a very great friend of mine. I think Walter Johnson was the fastest pitcher in history. Walter Johnson, as far as I'm concerned, was the greatest pitcher in baseball history. He was very difficult, tough for right-hand hitters and also even left-hand hitters. And he was never clocked, but no doubt was the fastest pitcher in history. Well, I'm going to tell you if you don't know. Bum, 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 about a great ball player from a long time ago. Bum, 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 bum. Who's a hero to me? I ain't putting you on, son. Because I'm now going to tell the story of baseball's great Walter Johnson. And all through baseball, he was loved and respected. Well, bitterness in Walter Johnson? Well, it was never detected. Well, now, when pitchers throw their pitch to scare, boom, 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 They actually try to almost hit that opposing player. Boom, do, 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 do. Walter Johnson wouldn't do that, not even just a little. He made sure he threw the baseball right down the middle. And all through baseball, he was loved and respected. Was there bitterness in Walter Johnson? Well, it was never detected. Now, he pitched for the Washington Senators back in about 1924. Now, 1906. Now, look, when the Washington Nine was a grind to win, boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, this Walter Johnson would actually ease up a little on the opposition. That's right. Boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. Now, the other teammates, they simply didn't get it. They said, Walter, how come you let him hit it? Now, Walter just told them with his gentle smile, boys, this game isn't any fun if you don't get a hit once in a while. Now, all through baseball, he was loved and respected. Was there bitterness in Walter Johnson? Well, it was never detected. Now, a record's just a record and a book is just a book. Boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. This Walter Johnson I speak of never so much as gave the opposing team a dirty look. Boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. And a season's just a season. In a game that was supposed to be just a game. Walter Johnson cared about people more than he cared about fame. So all through baseball, he was loved and respected. Uh, bitterness at Walter Johnson, well, it was never detected. Ooh. 
The main thing in, in throwing a ball is to hold your curve, your slowing, or whatever you can fasten the same way and let it go with the same delivery. Uh, you'd, I'd hold my slow ball like this. I don't use a slow ball a whole lot, but that's the way I would throw it. Or you can just hold the ball the same way out on the end of your fingers and, and just sort of ease up on it as you let it go. But always have, try to have the same motion with your fast one, your curve, and your slow one. Because if you change your motion when you're pitching a certain ball, well, the batter's going to find out what you're throwing. So try to get the same delivery in every pitch. But uh, you can slow up on for slow one, or with a curve as you let it go, give your wrist a twist, you fasten and straight over like that. If you walk over here, I'll throw you a few and then show you how to show you how to throw them. All right, go right ahead. I throw the camera. Yeah, right up yeah. the camera. Now let's see. I should be trying out. Malo and I. Manager Walter Johnson. All right, Adam, here, go ahead. See here, be here. Take that ball down. Take your ball, see, Adam, and throw it the same way. Only be careful when you come down. Keep that ball low, see. Let her down low. Your fastball breaks down when it's down low. Bring it up like that. Curve ball is a lot better. It's got to be up. Your fastball down. <laughs> If I were to say that this is the happiest moment in my life, I wouldn't be telling the truth. After I sit down, then I can say that this is the happiest moment in my life. Smokey Joe Wood was in the major leagues for 15 years from 1908 to 1922. He was with the Red Sox and the Cleveland Indians. He was one of the great pitchers of his era hurt his arm, came back to the big leagues as an outfielder, and one year hit over 350 as an outfielder. You started with the Red Sox in 1908. Mm -hmm. I broke into Boston when I was only 18. The youngest man in the league, I think. I never saw a big league game until I broke into the big league. Did you think you'd make it when you got up there? Well, after I pitched a few games, I knew I'd make it, because there was nobody as fast as I was except Walter Johnson in those days. But as I went along and was so successful with strikeouts and so on, I was pretty fast. I could throw a ball about as hard as anybody outside of Walter Johnson probably, and there wasn't much difference between us. Wow. 1912, I won 34 and lost five. I know. <laughs> and got three out of four in the World Series, three victories and one defeat. As a pitcher, I was at the top of the heap, right along with the best, Walter yeah, and I. you sure were. I was so fast that I was just rearing back and letting them go. And you threw a hard ball all the time. That's right. For nine innings. That's right. I never, I, I wasn't smart enough to throw a change of pace, and I, oh, I never, never threw over a half a dozen curved balls. But I was fast. I could really throw that ball so that you know, a lot of these fellows say they did this and so on. Very few fellows ever lived could throw a ball fast enough to have a hump on it. I happen to be one of them. That's why they call you Smokey. Speed. Yeah. But I don't know of any case where a pitcher of such stature, you know, a star pitcher way up there, whose arm went bad and he came back and made it as an outfielder, which is very rare. Well, I think Babe and I were the only two fellows that ever played both in the outfield and as pitcher in the World Series. I was around a 290, and I was a 300 hitter. But one year I had I hit about 365 in Cleveland one year. Well, what did me, my God, he was... A He's the only pitcher that I ever hit against that I didn't know whether I swung under the ball or over the ball. I just missed it, that's all. And I don't know how, but you'd miss it. Do you remember that 1912 game with Walter Johnson? Yes, very well. 
The reason that it was a big game, you you got the, did you ever have, get the history of that game? I think so. But tell me. Well, there's four of us today that hold the American League record of 16 straight games, 16 straight wins without a defeat. Now, up at that time, Walter Johnson had his 16 and had lost his 17th. I had about 11. Well, old Foxy Clark Griffith comes in and Walter Johnson said have the right to defend his uh, record of 16 straight, so he challenged Joe Wood to meet Walter Johnson. Well, hell, we pitched against one another many and many a time before, and, and even after that. There were very few pitchers ever lived, uh, uh, Larry, that had, had a fast enough ball where it would really rise. Well, I, I was one of them. Walter Johnson and I were the ones in those days. And so they advertised like prize fighters with biceps and triceps and all that stuff. And that is the only time, uh, all the time I was there, and I don't think since, that the, the uh, people who came to the game, the fans, were sitting right alongside the third baseline and the first baseline. We were sitting up, instead of sitting on our bench back where the benches are now and where they were then, we were sitting on chairs right up alongside of those people that were along the line. Was that and, in Fenway Park? Or yeah, Fenway it? Park. Yeah. That's the year it was opened. And I won one to nothing that day. But I, I, Walter Johnson, to me, was the greatest pitcher that ever lived. Be I Johnson, had, one to nothing. Oh, yes. And, uh, of course, my God, if he'd had the club behind me, him that I had behind me, he never would have lost a game. I, that's the unfortunate part of Walter's pitching. He, he had a bad club behind him all the time, and I had a good club. They always tell me that Walter Johnson had a deadly fear of hitting a batter. In I don't think he ever had any deadly fear of it, but uh, Walter would never throw it at him. In fact, Walter and I said more or less of an unwritten law between us that we wouldn't throw curveballs to one another. And we just popped that fast one. He popped his fast one to me, and I popped my fast one to him. And one day he curved me and didn't tell me. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> I curved the life out of him then from then on. <laughs> yes, sir. I think he was the greatest pitcher that ever lived because I, I don't think probably with the same natural ability, maybe Matty might have even have been better, but Walter had the natural ability. My God, his arms would stretch from here over to there. You know, when he spread out here, he was a foot past mine on each side. And a great big fellow, well over 200 pounds, and if he wanted to, he could throw that ball right by you. But uh, to me, a man with natural ability, he was the greatest pitcher I ever saw. Well, Ty, you've asked me not to make this too personal. But you have played in more ball games, you have made more hits, you have stolen more bases, and you have scored more runs than any player that ever lived. A record like this is a personal matter with a good many million people. You faced Walter Johnson's fast one when he had more smoke than a burning oil well. Who was the best pitcher you ever faced, Ty? Walter Johnson had more stuff, although Ed Walsh in his prime was a wonder. But the ones who gave me the most trouble were pitchers like uh, Mogridge, Carl Wildman, and Carter, all left-handers who depended more on slow curves and dinky dinks. They bothered me more than speed or fast curves.